Okay, and I do know that Neil has the radio voice. Everyone says Neil's voice. And the face. The face for radio? Absolutely. I want us to have really good intro music. Where is it? Is that happening in? Can we get that? Uh, intro music, please. Roll them. <laughs> well, Nate, thanks for coming to Florida. Hey, my pleasure. My name is Neil Spencer. I serve as one of our uh, pastors here at Coastline Golf Breeze, and we're in a brand new studio, new to us. But I just thought it'd be fun to get to know you a little bit. Um, I've known you for 21 years. It'd be fun for our team to get to know you, for people that are going to watch, the five people that watch this. We yes. want them to know you. Thank you for watching. Yeah, the five. I got six kids almost, so there we go. Maybe they'll watch it. Anyway, tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe um, what makes you tick, why you'd come to Florida. Mm-hmm. I don't understand anything you'd want to share by way of introduction. That's great. Well, my name is Nate. I'm a pastor of a church called Anthem Chapel, and I've known Neil, as you mentioned, for yeah, multiple decades. Mm-hmm. First met Neil in Ireland, mm-hmm. and he was... Uh, well, I'll tell some of the story. Uh, is mm-hmm. We met in Ireland. He, of course, is a pastor's son, so that comes with certain privileges. Mm-hmm. I was just a nobody on the block, and so in Ireland, the jobs they gave me do on this kind of missions trip was things like stay up all night and guard the equipment. So I've been up all night and uh, guarding the equipment on this like kind of outreach location. And I come in super tired, and then here's this kid on a, I'm sharing a room with. He's been sleeping all night, sleeping all day. <laughs> and I'm like, who is this guy? And that's how I first met Neil, is a guy that slept all day long. Yeah. But anyway, uh, great guy. Story. Yeah, so yeah. then uh, from that, you know, we became roommates later yeah. on. We shared a, um, a triple bunk bed yeah. with a friend of ours named Jess, and so we've got a lot, a lot of history with you, Neil. Love you mm-hmm. and appreciate mm-hmm. all that you do, just as a pastor, as a father, as a mm-hmm. friend. So when you asked me to come out to Florida to teach, I was honored and blessed mm-hmm. to be here, man. Looking forward to it. It's been a great day so far. Awesome. And glad to uh, just spend a few moments together on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're from Santa Barbara, California. Yeah. So I was born in Texas, born actually. In Texas. So actually, Port Arthur, Beaumont, Houston area. So on the Gulf, I feel like there's some kindredness oh, there, right? on the Gulf, right on. Um, but my parents currently live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but uh, moved out to California. My dad's job took him out there. So I've been in Santa Barbara, see, I'm 41, and we moved out there my sophomore year of high school. Okay. So I was like, what, 15 or 16 years old. So I've been out there mm. for quite a long time. Mm. Mm. Married? And, married. Uh, my wife's name is Allison. So we've, been married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've been married for about 16 years. <laughs> And I have four kids, a 13-year-old daughter turning 14 in just three weeks, Mm. a 11-year-old son, nine-year-old son, and a six-year-old son. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, I was part of a church called Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara for almost Mm. a decade where we served together, Neil and I. And then three years ago in 2018, launched a church, planted a church called Anthem Chapel. Mm. And it has been a real blast doing that. Wow. So half of your, well, at least a third of your existence as a church has been in a global pandemic era. Mm Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll talk wow, a little I didn't bit think about, about that. that. Yeah. That's true. After three years, one year Third of, of your existence <laughs> yes, that's right. has been in the midst of pandemic. That's right. Which we'll talk a little bit about that. But, you know, um, thank you for sharing that. It's nice to kind of get a little bit of insight into your life yeah. and what God's doing. And, and I think the focus for this, and, you know, maybe the audience who will maybe enjoy this, are just those that are maybe interested in somewhat of pastoral ministry, what mm-hmm. it's like to lead in challenging times, Absolutely. and how you just kind of navigate pastoral life, because, you know, there's a book that's by Paul David Tripp that the title of the book, at least the title page, has kind of a traffic warning sign on it called Dangerous Calling, and that navigating pastoral ministry, we know guys that um, we served alongside with that have stepped out of pastoral ministry, or for one reason or another, or but it's a, it's a dynamic to kind of still stay the course in ministry and do it in a way that you still feel like it's fun, like you want to do right, it, right? And it's fruitful and it's healthy, you know. So you're a guy that's done that uh, for at least the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. So that's some of the things we want to talk about today. Absolutely, but sounds great. Let me see if I can kick it off with this first question. So it's actually like at the time of this recording, this is March of 2021. Mm-hmm. So March 2020, America Church as we know it mm-hmm. changed. Like the country shut down. Like March of 2020, we entered into lockdown. So you're in California, which is still navigating at the time of this recording, still a season of kind of opening back up into restaurants right. and 
sometimes going back and forth from like, okay, we're open, we're not open. But a year ago, church as we know it changed. What was that like for you, and what mm-hmm. was that like for Anthem? Uh, great, great, great question, uh, Neil. Well, first off, we are a mobile church, and so we don't have a actual building. So blessed to be in a, a facility, really cool. I know there's pros and cons to having facility, but mm. we don't have that. We were meeting at a junior high school, mm. and a great partnership, really fun to meet at a junior high school because we had immediate access to the teachers and loving on them and meeting the administration and just kind of being a visible representation of Jesus at the school. Mm. Um, and so we got the phone call on Friday, March you know, like 12th or something, hey, you guys can't meet Mm. On Sunday morning, uh, mm. because of this of, of COVID nineteen, we're shutting down school, and you can't meet. And we're like, oh, okay, it's crazy. Let's okay, let's transition to like this. I'll record a message. So we recorded something on like a Friday night, put it together, and did you know online church as we knew it. Mm. March fifteenth, I think was the day. Were you guys already online before then? Yeah, great or, question. Yeah, okay. we already were live streaming. We already okay. had camera equipment. We already had. We didn't have like a full on tech guy, sure, yeah. a tech person. But we had volunteers that helped us, and so we had the ability to record, which was a blessing. Yeah. We already had the idea, you know, live streaming, all that. We already kind of had that wired in. So that was an early church. Two years in, you were already... Absolutely. From yeah, the well. very beginning, we had uh, we were streaming from the very okay, beginning. Yeah. We felt like uh, it's not that hard to do. Yeah, I mean, right. there is... Obviously, I'm talking non-technical guy, but sure. there is, in a sense, it's like you got a camera, you pretty much have Wi-Fi, you can stream. It's accessible. It's pretty can, accessible. Yeah, Facebook yeah. Live and those things. So... From the very beginning, we had it, the ability. We, we're getting better and better at it. But uh, yeah, so we had it, we recorded, and we had that first Sunday online. And so... What was that like? It was pretty weird. Okay. You know, I never really talked to just a camera, like just speaking to a camera. Uh, and so I actually called, you know, my family was there, and I got four kids. And so I was like a little mini oh, church little right there, a little yeah. audience there. Yeah. I think I had some of our favorable elders. Favorable audience. Yeah, yeah, I had a very favorable audience <laughs> out there. You know, I, I'm a holler back preacher, so I wanted to hear, you know, give me some amens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. and it worked, worked pretty well. And so that first that first Sunday was like, okay, one, one off, sure. And then it became... You know, the next Sunday and the next Sunday. So how long did that, living in um, Central California, the Central Coast there, how long? So March of 2020. Yeah, I think March 15th, actually. Okay, so when did you kind of, hey, we're going to do an in-person gathering? Like, when, and what was that like? I mean, when, what did you do? Did you go back to the school? I mean, how did mm-hmm. how did all that navigate for yes. you? What's kind of gone on since then? Yeah, so we were online, like everybody else was online, just trying to create, uh, we felt like we needed, we had to keep going, so we never, we never not had church, if you know, we never had not yeah, had, had online, an online, yeah, yeah online, online service. Yeah. We went from yeah from the very beginning online, and then that was uh, March and April. We thought about Easter, as everyone's thinking about Easter. What are we gonna do? Um, and so we had our online Easter service. So then in California, it was around the May, mid May, where we heard. Uh, I think the date was May thirty first. Maybe it was nationwide. I don't know. Maybe it was nationwide. May thirty first was a Sunday where uh, you were allowed for outdoor gathering. Okay. Outdoor, outdoor. gatherings yeah. with no limitation on people. It just uh, it had to be in regards to how many could you safely socially distance. Okay. And so we, from the very beginning, because I knew we were going to be a mobile church, I wanted to partner with a church that had property that maybe we hmm. could do a shared space. So from the very beginning in 2018, hmm. we had a shared space um, kind of relationship with a hmm. church called Christ Lutheran Church hmm. in Goleta. So we, and they have a like three acres and one acre is developed, two acres is not developed. So huh. when we heard that we could go outside, we said, well, Let's go outside. Huh. And so we had May 31st, our first Sunday back. We just said everybody, hey, we're going to meet outside. We set up a little stage, set up our sound equipment. Again, we were mobile already. But you had so, kind of a headquarters or home Yeah, we had a little office space, but we office had space, our yeah. own mobile sound system. We had yeah, everything. Were was We were ready for it. So we hmm. just set up shop out in that dirt field, hmm. and we just said, well, hey, we're gathering. Hmm. Now, we did do – I should backtrack a little bit because there was a little bit of a relief – before the Sunday morning, I think gatherings outside were oh, safe, okay. and we did a worship night. Okay. So, like, let's say maybe it was earlier May when we could. There was something mm-hmm. about outside that that was released. So we did do a worship night just to kind of see: Are people? Do people want to? Meet? Did they? Did they? Show and they up? did. We oh, had okay. maybe 150 people, maybe wow, maybe yeah. 200 people. Oh, that's it was awesome. pretty awesome. Yeah. And we just did a worship night. I mean, mm-hmm. we did a little thing. So then we're like, well. 
people were kind of liking that. Mm. I think if we do a Sunday morning, it'd be, it would go well. Mm. And that's what happened. And we have been, since May 31st, Okay. we have been meeting outside okay. since May 31st, 2020. And you're in Santa Barbara where it is just always Where beautiful. it works, yeah. So I got to com- confess, it wouldn't work if we were like in See, in Florida, Florida <laughs> we condition our air inside to yes, make it do. feel like you're outside. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. But I mean, God uniquely sets you up. The thing I like about that story is you mentioned that even at your inception, without anyone having an awareness of a global pandemic being on the horizon, you had the foresight, the leading of God's Spirit, whatever you want to call it, to partner with an existing mm-hmm. church to kind of set yourself up for whatever the Lord wanted to do. Absolutely. And I think that's that's there's a lot of wisdom in that, just to not kind of solely live in the moment, mm-hmm. but to live in the moment and then also be planning for what the Lord may or may not have. So that you've been a that's been a, a benefit to you. Especially. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think about uh just you know, at the time in 2018, we thought, okay, cool, we're in this this Lutheran church, we're yeah. sharing this property, we needed a place to store a trailer with our sound. We we needed a little office space and so uh, but most of the property seriously is a dirt field. Yeah. So you yeah, thinking, I've been there. I was able yeah, to be there yeah, a few weeks Neil ago. Neil came yeah. and visited and, and shared it's community. It's beautiful. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Really cool. But at the time, we're thinking, this is a dirt field. What's, how cool is this? But isn't it interesting to think, wow, Lord, you've set us up to be able to use this dirt field for your kingdom. Other churches in our community that were mobile, other churches that met at school. There's a great church in town um, that was meeting at a junior high school in Santa Barbara. And uh, and because they didn't really have any other place, they have not gathered mm-hmm. since March fifteenth, twenty twenty. Wow! Now they've had—I shouldn't say that—they've had a few little things they've done, you know, a little a beach thing or something. But really, on a consistent Sunday morning, they've not not met. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember seeing something on social platforms or something that you guys even began to open up the use of the tent that you have to other congregations, to where you even did like a, a revival type thing. That's right. Like in the That's weeks, right. you had other pastors speaking, You they were just kind of using it at different times. Absolutely. Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah. again, you know, um, we just, we like every church, like you, Neil, and Coastline, uh, Gulf Breeze, we were trying to be innovative and creative and using yeah. this opportunity to just think differently. Yeah. So we thought, okay, we had this, you know, what other... Tr- so, it, so I should backtrack. We ended up... Because it is not like it's not as hot as Florida, right? Sure, but it does get the sun does shine. Sure. It's a dry heat. It's yeah. a dry heat. So we, uh, I was our second Sunday. So this was like June seventh or something. I saw uh, someone in the congregation. We were meeting outside, and it was a sunny day. And this little, this older lady was in her beach chair, so you know, excited to be at church. But the sun was just cooking her. I could just tell. <laughs> She's sizzling. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? We got to get some kind of tent. Yeah. So that. By the by, the third Sunday we had met okay, outside, tent, yeah. we rented a tent. We knew a company that was a event rental place hmm. that was not renting anything, and yeah, so no we ended that. up having three huge wedding tents, like about a hundred by hundred feet by one hundred feet, and so now we have this like tabernacle basically. Hmm. And uh, that was what we used for church, and so we thought, okay, well this is working well for us. No other church has something like this. Let's what if we Open it up you for the churches. It. We selfish. share it. Like yeah. the Lord was generous to us. Right. Let's be generous to other right. people. So blessed we, to be a uh, yes, to be absolutely. A yeah. And so yeah. we had this idea. What if we did like a revival week? You know, being in a tent is definitely a unique experience. I've never done church in a tent before. You yeah. hear about the We've Billy Graham. You hear Chuck about Smith, Billy yeah. You hear yeah. about all those guys. And so there's something. There is something kind of unique about it. So mm. we said, well, what if we do a straight up revival? Yeah. So we asked some other churches, hey, what if we did? You know, again, this is just creativity land. We're just yeah, dreaming up stuff. Like, trying. would it work? Yeah. So we called, you know, four or five churches. Hey, would you be interested in and in, uh, hosting a night? We have this uh, facility, and they're all Calvary chapels. They agree with everything no, that you believe. Exactly. In. No, you know, no, these these guys are just you know churches that we would say, yeah, they're not close we're not to doctrine. Close, there. Yeah, yeah, we love Jesus is our Lord. He's the our Bible, Savior. The Word that, of God's yeah. inerrant. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna have some things a little bit different with end right. times or you know. 
maybe spiritual gifts, right. sure. But are these guys advancing the kingdom? We're going to see them in heaven. Audible? You, yeah. got, you right. better believe it. So right. we said, hey, we'd love for you to host a night. Mm-hmm. We'll do a night. Would you want to do a night? Would you want to do a night? And we had about four or five churches want to so do it. So how did that go? It went awesome. Wow. It was so and so exciting. Wow, that's awesome. The only negative, and this is just a funny thing, is you know not everyone loves the sound of worship music outside. Uh, so there's an app in our community called Next Door app. Oh, yeah. Everyone's do you guys have that? that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Neighbors. So yeah. the neighbors. So we definitely upset some neighbors because you, so you know, didn't love thy neighbor. We didn't love thy neighbor as well. We we tried. You, you broke the you know, second commandment. We, I know. <laughs> the greatest well, commandment. You I know. No, we tried to love our neighbors with the gospel, <laughs> but some of them were no, not that it. happy with the sound because yeah, okay, yeah. it was like you know we seven p.m. Five nights in a row outside concert, basically. Yeah, reggae and worship. then they had to practice. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> they had to practice. So, uh, for the most part, though, the church body, like we say revival, it wasn't like people no, walking down the sawdust aisle giving their life. We had a no, couple, no, no. we had some salvation. Absolutely, people right. gave their life. Was there rededication? Revitalization. Absolutely. Was there just like, wow, I'm meeting again? Right. I'm with the other Christians again. This was yeah, in you August. You were giving a time for revitalization. Yes, we yeah. did this in August before school started. Okay. And it was just, it absolutely was a great time. Yeah, in fact, awesome. we're thinking about doing it again this August. Okay. Just, hey, what if we did it again? Yeah, by coastline this time. Exactly. We'll fly you guys out. <laughs> and uh, it worked really well. It was fun. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And so, it's, in the meantime, we've also shared the tent with another church that needed a place to meet. And so hmm. we did afternoon. Hey, why don't you guys come in the afternoon? And uh, we had a church do that. We actually have a church. Um, that I met with last week or this week or I kind of forget what day it is that uh, need, wanted to use this tent for a baptism service. Wow. We said absolutely. So yeah. we're trying You're a to steward, be steward, not an owner. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I mean, it sounds like just hearing that story. This next question almost it almost just begs a simple question like. You're a three-year-old church, Mm -hmm. and for two years you met in a school, somewhat of a predictable, hey, Sunday, we know what's happening. There's coffee, there's donuts, they're going to be inside, there's worship, there's teaching, there's baby dedication, there's whatever it is. You pivot, like everyone does, to some degree or another, but this had to have changed the maybe the bit of the culture, the dynamic, the people who are showing up to a certain degree. Like, how, how has this impacted your church? Because you, one of the great things about that story is you're not just saying, how can we maintain? How can mm-hmm. we go back to do what we've done? You said, how can we pivot? How can we learn? How can we even be a giver in this situation? What is that kind of leadership? What is that kind of approach... Like, how has it impacted you as a person? Mm-hmm. How has it impacted as your family and your church? Like, what's it yeah. done to you guys? Yeah. Have you just survived COVID mm-hmm. or are you thriving? Like, what, yeah. what would you say to that? That's a great question, Neil. You know, I think for me, I wanted to create COVID. I wanted us to be able to say, hey, we how are we going to, uh, how are we going to just go back to normal? But how, how can we also uh, push the envelope? Like, yeah. not only just get back up and going, but actually progress and push the kingdom of God uh, forward in our community. And so I think it has been a chan- a, an opportunity for us to lead well, lead with vision. You know, kids in ministry for us, we kind of thought differently about yeah, kids I've ministry. Seen that. Tell us we... a little bit about that. I've never seen anybody do that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so we, yeah. we just knew... Um, it was a time to be creative and yeah. innovative. Developed a whole character. We developed, yeah. And so we had, yeah. Uh, Neil's been able to see. We basically, our our kids ministry was called Ark A R K Anthem Royal yeah. Kid Ministry. And through the summertime of COVID, when we were just trying to figure out how to minister to kids, how to minister to families, we our kids team created a, a YouTube some YouTube videos. And our one of our kids' interns, uh, he's not, he's full time now. Yeah. His name is Rhett. Yeah. And just by chance, he invented a character called Ranger Rhett. Yeah, dresses up in the dresses whole, up. He had like a like backpack, a ranger. and yeah. he just made up this character going on excursions. And, and, and yeah. he said, "What if we do like for spring? This is spring break. So this was like in April or March. Hey, what if we?" Um, Create like a YouTube video where kids watch it and they have to find things in the in the like neighborhood. Like a scavenger hunt. Like a scavenger hunt, yeah. So anyway, he just created this character and then we just kind of rolled with it. And all of a sudden, Ranger Rhett became like the mascot yeah, of our kids' I ministry. Yeah, and awesome. so much so that in two weeks, we actually are rebranding our whole kids' ministry, yeah. ARK Anthem Ranger yeah. Kids. And when I was there, you guys incorporate, you have a, like, you know, a worship set that's mm-hmm. very um, Christ-honoring and, yeah. um, you know, very... 
and even very common that you would see at many churches. But then you have a space in your gathering right. where Rangerette comes up and starts leading like hip, hip, hippopotamus. You got it. Absolutely. And the whole church is like swaying. And it felt very like, man, I just feel like this is, uh, you feel like it's family. Yeah. You know, it just feel, it kind of took the tension out of the air or mm-hmm. whatever it was. It just brought a strong sense of koinonia, community, fellowship, yeah. that we're a body. And I so think that's, that's something unique. that's been really sweet, Neil, is that, you know, I love kids ministry. I did kids ministry yeah, for a long did. time. I, I love youth yeah. ministry. Yeah. Uh, but there is an element, if you think about a Sunday morning moment, we do. We have our kids in the kids' ministry classrooms. We have our junior high over in junior high, high school mm-hmm. over in high school. And it does become, you know, the term silo, like these little yeah. these compartments of ministry. And what uh, COVID has done for us is like we are. We are, we are all under the tent. Yeah. High school, huh. junior high, kids. And I'm not saying it's perfect. Right, it is sure, gnarly. Yeah. You go, and it may you be got, for a season. Yeah, yeah. You got five kids. I yeah, mean, yeah. it is. It's you got you know little Leo running around. Like, yeah. is he really paying attention? Is CC able to focus? You but know? you have bags. You got. I mean, you guys yeah. have been so creative in trying to engage everyone at whatever their level we of reception yeah, is. That absolutely. A, a three-year-old's got something for them. Absolutely. And so does the 33-year-old and the 83-year-old. Yeah, yeah. They're there. But so, together, it's pretty amazing. So that's what I've we never thought about. What if we like? Yeah, if kids are in the service, what if we have Ranger Ed? do two fun songs, and yes, the adults are in there. Yes, there's people that don't have any kids, but it's kind of fun. So we'll have a normal worship set, and you're in the spirit, you're raising your hand, you know, battle belongs to the Lord, it's great. And then all of a sudden, Ranger Red's singing Pharaoh, Pharaoh, yeah. you know? and But it's it's really exciting. It equalizes it, it, it seems like. It absolutely. Seems like it totally... And then we'll have Ranger Red do a little devotion every other Sunday. And, and I've been trying to really be more mindful, like, okay, there's kids in here, so... I'll just maybe in my message just recognize, hey kids, and and you know who did Moses have to go to? Yeah. What was the guy's name? Yeah, Pharaoh, guys, and then yeah. kind of go back, you know, just it just try seems to be like mindful. you've done a good job of making church feel like, hey, I can be here, like I can uh-huh. hang out, like I'm I'm not necessarily like I don't have to put a front on to be here. It's accessible, mm. and I think like you know so much of church today. I mean, even what we're in, we're in a studio, so much can just feel so polished that it feels mm. like, man, I can't really like. Can my kid drop a donut here and it'd be okay? You know, like, <laughs> like I don't know. You just that accessibility, and even to the leader. Like, we have so many gifted leaders and communicators in our uh, in the global church, and I'm super yeah. thankful for that. Um, but this is leads kind of leads me to my next question. Like, some of the leaderships you've you've grown under, um, but you're doing a good job of making leadership accessible. Mm-hmm. You know, like we don't want to celebritize the pulpit. Um, obviously, it's honored, it's respected. But you also have to feel like you could talk to the guy, you know, and um, you've had the ability, being in the Central Coast, to be kind of connected to, at least within our little world, Calvary mm-hmm. Chapel, um, kind of an association of churches of maybe 15, right. 1,600 churches since the 70s. I mean, here's some of the names. And, you know, if you're a guy that doesn't go to church or doesn't know about Calvary, these aren't going to mean anything to you. But um, if you've been a part of Calvary, maybe you've heard the name Ricky Ryan or uh, Britt Merrick or David Guzik, you know. These are some names, or Francis Chan, he's from that area, like, he's from Simi, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, not too far from you. These are some names. So, I mean, what what was that like as a, let's say you're 19, 20 years old, Calvary right. Chapel, Santa Barbara, Ricky Ryan's your pastor, and then he hands the baton, you know, years later to David Guzik, and Britt Merrick's there with college ministry. What's it been like to just, this is a two-part question, but to kind of grow under those mm-hmm. kind of leaders, and then secondarily... I think to find your own identity, mm-hmm. you know, once you became, hey, I'm, I'm going to plant a church, like, got to eat the meat, spit out the bones, you know, mm-hmm. so to speak. But first and foremost, I mean, what's that been like for you? Because, I mean, David Guzik, that's like Blue Letter Bible superstar, right, you know right. what I mean? Like, Britt Merrick, the guy bought Channel Islands. Ricky yeah. Ryan, he is Santa Claus. You yeah. know what I mean? He is the nicest, most joyful. Everybody loves all those guys. Right. I mean, what's that been like to glean from and learn mm-hmm. from and um, just kind of absorb that atmosphere? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. But then also, you know... What's it like to be you? I mean, how, how do yeah. you do that? I mean, all of us grow up in shadows to one degree or another, mm-hmm. and then eventually we got to kind of step forward into the light and lead. Um, I don't know. What's that experience been like for you? It's an, it's an awesome um, resume, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to have those kind of men right. either indirectly or directly invest in you. So I don't mm-hmm. know, maybe just tell me a little bit about that. We won't take too much more of your time. I know you got to no. teach tonight. Yeah. But um, yeah, what's that been like? I'm very interested in that. That's, well, that's I'll awesome. tell you, husband, it was, it was hard. Let me just tell you, it was oh, not yeah. easy. It wasn't fun. I mean, you know, looking back, I see what the Lord was doing. But in the moment, it's like, 
everywhere I go, everywhere I went in my ministry career, there was someone ahead of me that was more awesome than me. <laughs> I mean, incredible. I mean, I again, I got hired at 19 years old at Calvary to be an intern. Um, I did six years of kids ministry. Well, the guy before me was a guy named Tommy. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody loved Tommy. Everyone loved Tommy. Tommy's the best. And like, I'm coming in like. You know, I'm not Tommy. You know, I'm just like this 19 year old. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I went into junior high ministry with a guy before me. It was a guy named Troy. Everybody mm. loved Troy. The parents love Troy, loved yeah. Troy. Like, he's so organized. <laughs> All right. Well, that's not me. Yeah. You know, and then I did, went into high school ministry. Who was, you know, um, uh, Gerald Torres, yeah. who was my high school pastor. Was Everybody the loved Gerald. He was this yeah. big, bald, Mexican buff <laughs> guy, you know. And Dickie I'm like, socks, white I'm head, man. not guy, that, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And you got Britton Murray, you got Ricky Ryan, you know, you got Dave, all these guys you mentioned way better than me, way mm. differently gifted than me. And so it was um, really like uh, humbling mm. and uh, lots of insecurity. Like, mm. who am I? Like, I'm a nobody. I cannot do this. Mm. And there's a season where like everything those guys touched became gold at the Midas touch, you know? And like, and so very intimidating. And, and so, um, you know, and then kind of feeling feeling God's call to start this church. Like seriously, Lord, is this is this me? Like, mm. you want to use me? Um, and so, uh, not to like have self pity, but it really was like at at the moment it was really hard because mm. these guys are huge shoes to follow after. Mm. And then at the same time, becoming all right, Lord, but who who am I? Okay, Lord, I have. You know, you have moved me on. I've had these experiences. You know, I, you are calling me to start this church. I, I am a leader. And I think for me, like COVID has allowed me really maybe to even feel more comfortable in the shoes of leadership that, I, that I'm in. Like, uh -huh. like, wow, yeah, you know, I, I'm not those people. I'm, I'm Nate Wagner. Hmm. And I get, can offer things that only I can offer. Mm -hmm. And I want to have a culture of leadership that is approachable. Mm -hmm. That is a culture where, like, um, it's not like they're in that closed office over there. That's the mm -hmm. church staff mm -hmm. area. That's the pastor's office. No, no, no. Not, we're here that together. We're, we're mm -hmm. in this together. This is your, this is not Nate's church. This is your church. This is mm -hmm. our church. This is the church of Jesus, you mm -hmm. know? And having a leadership style that hopefully is approachable, that hopefully has flat communication. Mm -hmm. Anyone can talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, uh, I think this COVID year has allowed me to recognize in leadership, you know, leading leadership you're, you're, you're just leading and maybe mm. you don't know the, the answer exactly right. I, I don't know how it was going to go putting a tent on a dirt field right sure, i right. don't know you know how is it going to go asking people to socially distant and how we're going to do you know, like but let's just go for it yeah let's just see and let's yeah. just lead yeah and i think this year of of uh, being in COVID has allowed my three-year this little three-year-old church anthem chapel to be seen in our community as actually having some maturity because we are just leading, we mm -hmm. are just trying to create, we mm -hmm. are just trying to uh, preach the good news of Jesus Christ as best we, we can, mm -hmm. not uh, in fear, not with um, um, stupidity, you know, having wisdom, yeah, wisdom yeah. having integrity, wise as serpents, innocent as doves. And um, and so I think it's been, you know, looking back, I see now all those men in my life, those leaders, I think it prepared me for this moment in time, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the hardest thing someone ever hears is um, not yet. Oh, yeah. When someone says, you know, not yet, you're not yet ready. You're mm -hmm. not yet ready to do this thing. Not quite and I think I'd, I'd heard that uh, a few times in my life, and those are hard things to hear. Uh, you think about the story of Joseph, right? So Joseph is in the, mm -hmm. in the in the pit, to the prison, to yeah. the palace, to all the stuff, you know? To all of a sudden, yeah, a moment, he's next to Pharaoh. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, Joseph didn't like those times, but they were preparing right. him. He had to go And through. I look yeah. at now, like all those men in my life, even when it, I felt like I was so insecure, the Ricky Ryans, David Goose, I look back now like, wow, those guys did impart stuff in me. And and I kind of am maybe a jigsaw puzzle of all these different leaders. Yeah, that you absorb that your atmosphere. Absorb me, yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's been it's been cool. And so mm. just growing, being more confident. Who's God called called mm. me to be? How I lead, and um, not to be intimidated by 
other leaders, but mm-hmm. to be blessed by friendship. And like, yep. you know, Neil, you're doing a great job at your mm. church here, and and I could either be intimidated by you mm. or just create fellowship, you sure. know, and collaborate, have, collaborate, and like, hey, yeah. Yeah, not compete, not compete, you yep. know. You're gonna do things I mean, differently. We get this design from Anthem. This, I, I love your so new, that, this new yeah. sweatshirt, guys. It looks awesome. Every, all of our swag comes from Anthem. No, we no, just no, go. No. What are they doing? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, me, that makes, I'm not sure if that makes sense. No, that or, makes yeah. sense because I mean, um, when there's giants around you, there's shadows, mm-hmm. and those shadows are pretty big. And Absolutely. so I think the thing about those giants is they're giants for a reason because they're amazing men right. and their calling and their character and their capability and their chemistry to speak to God's people. So. Mm. There are those shadows which you just spoke to that are challenging to come out of. But on the flip side of that, the benefit, like you know, you got to sit under some amazing men right. that know how to teach the word, know how to pastor, know Absolutely. how to lead. I mean, David Guzik blazing the trail in Germany, planning a right. Bible college, Brit like a global movement. You know, yeah. Ricky, like how how do you even describe Ricky Ryan? Mm-hmm. This is an amazing guy. So so many great things that you've been able to benefit from, mm-hmm. and every strength. As a backsided weakness. That's right. So when you grow up with men like that around you, you've got to learn. Okay, mm-hmm. this little chick's got to get out of the egg and spread my own wings. You know. Right. So I think it's neat to see that you've been able to do that. Last question. Yes, sir. And then we're just going to ask you a few like, oh, this is who Nate is. Okay, questions. that's okay. great. So I don't know if this is the right way to say this phrase. I okay. don't always say things perfectly, but you I've don't heard... always say things perfectly. Not always. Really? One time I did. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Anyway, but like, so I've heard that forties. Uh huh. You know, would be kind of considered the youth of old age. Okay, okay. 30s. Could be, maybe, maybe it's 40s, who knows. Kind of the age, well, the old age of youth. Does that make sense? Like, when you get to be in your 40s and 50s, Mm -hmm. you're still young. You've got vitality, you're working hard, you're kind of at the peak of life. Hmm. But you are able to look back a little bit and go, okay, I see that now. Like, I didn't see that when I was 12 or 22 or 32. But at 42... 41. 41. Yes. I can see things with maybe this kind of clarity. Mm. At 41. Thank you. 42 in August. <laughs> October. October. Sounds the same. August, October. It's got an ah sound. Aren't anyway. you turning 40 this year yourself? Yeah. So okay. <laughs> with that said, like the question is, you're 41. Yes. What would you tell 21-year-old Nate? Ooh. Who's like th- hearing about... Tommy or Troy or yeah. Gerald or am I ever going to plan it or whatever? Mm. There's so much that's just like in a mist in foresight when you're in your 20s. Correct. Now you're in your 40s. You see a little bit more clearly the hand of God. Mm-hmm. What would a 41-year-old Nate say to a 21-year-old mm-hmm. Nate? I think the first thing, great question. I would say, uh, Nate, just keep saying yes. Hmm. Just keep saying yes. I think that's where... To like I'm, dates? Like, a, uh, like just, what do you mean? <laughs> just keep saying yes to... Because you had some interesting ladies say, hey, Nate, I want to... <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you mean by that? Yeah. I, I mean, like, I think I look at where I'm at now, it's just because I kept saying yes, you know? Mm. Uh, yes to doing junior high ministry. Yes to mm. doing high school. You weren't yes afraid to, of opportunity. Wasn't yeah. afraid of opportunity. Okay. And I didn't, you know, I think there's some people... I would say to, 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 um, to, to, to young Nate... You know, you don't really know what your calling is. Yeah. You want to serve. You want to serve the Lord. So just serve Him in whatever capacity you can. Yeah. And I think there's so many people that get tripped up. Like, no, no, no. I'm called to this. I'm oh, called yeah. to this. Like this thing right here. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, maybe you're called to that. I mean, do you really know that? Like, how right. about you just called to serve the church? Called to just this. And so I think for me. Looking back, I would just encourage myself, hey, just keep saying yes. Mm. Uh, no matter what opportunity lies before you, just say yes, and the Lord will, will direct you. Mm. And I would say to myself, probably, hopefully, I'd say, you know, just you know, persevere. <laughs> you know, yeah. Don't grow weary in doing good. Huh. Because um, it's easy to compare. Look to your left and look to mm. your right and see other people, what they're doing, mm. Um, and grow weary, like, oh, this mm. is not panning out for me. And sure. But like, just say, no, no, Nate, you just keep persevering. Mm. And I'd maybe say the third thing. So I'd say, not, you know, I'd say, uh, just say, say yes. yes. I'd say, persevere. And I would say, uh, truly, the best is yet to come. That's true. It just keeps getting better with it Jesus. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. It just keeps getting better. As you follow the Lord, and that's really all it is, it seems to be. I think it was Greg Laurie who said, like, success in Christianity is just faithfulness in the same direction mm-hmm. or something like that. He said it better than me. Yeah, sure. Like, like I said, most people. <laughs> but anyway, but that point, you know, I think is just like, man, if you just stay the course, mm-hmm. the course starts to look really good. Yeah. Ah, that's a yeah. great one. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the fruit looks, Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. A few random fun questions. Okay. I'm ready. Well, I don't know if they're fun, 
But there are questions. Um, candy bar or candy guy? Mm. You know what? I um, I was a Snickers guy, mm. but I think I'm just a candy guy. I like just little little sweets, little like sweet tarts. Uh, yeah, like sweet tarts or like you know what I really like uh, is run- you remember the candy runs, runs, chewy runs. You ever had those? I have had chewy runs. Those are good. We have chewy sprees in my office. I, 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 I think about those. Yeah. different shapes. But, but yeah. the banana, the banana runt. Oh, that's so the good. worst. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> I love that one. That's the worst. Nobody okay. likes those. Only Californians. But I also will say hashtag Reese's peanut butter. Not hashtag like slash. I do like candy, but Reese's peanut butter cups are incredible. That's true. Unless there you have go. a peanut allergy. Unless you have a peanut allergy, okay. The best. So basically, you didn't answer that question. I did. You but said I like, you like chocolate and candy. I like okay, that's candy. cool. Sure, that's right. Both. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so how about this burrito or burger? Ooh, I. You're from good the West Coast. So you got good at both. You do, man. I had a smash burger uh, the other okay, day. Okay, Texas. So tasty, but a good burrito. What kind of meat? Mmm, carnitas. Yeah, that's what you Californians yeah, do. See, for love me, carnitas I thought you would say like tri-tip, because where you're from, tri-tip. Yeah, I do like tri-tip, but, but not, no, I'd no. say uh, maybe a carnitas burrito from Super mm. Cucas. Super Cucas. Huh. Be amazing. Or Freebirds. Huh. So beach or mountains? Because you got to choose Gray, both. I get to choose Santa both. Santa Barbara is uniquely situated with the both, with both. Got everything. I do right. love the beach. Beach, I'd say beach. You say the beach. Okay, yeah. what would you say, maybe in the last five years, you know, since you've been planning a church, or you just, you know, this is fun, uh, most influential book, one, two, or three. Like, oh, oh, these books, these authors. I've really looked at, these are awesome. I gleaned from these guys. Mm, and maybe great. not even book, because here's the deal. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really like to read. I know that might okay. sound bad for wow. a pastor. But yeah. But I love to learn. Yeah. So I love to learn through conversations like these, mm-hmm. podcasts. I do read some. I mean, sermons. I mean, but I'm learning. Who do you love to learn from? I mean, That's who are great. some of those individuals that are just like, you know what? This is an individual that in this realm of my life, like I'm mm-hmm. changing oil. I'm, I'm gonna YouTube. This is my YouTube guy. Like That's great. <laughs> whatever I'm doing, like who do I like to learn from? Who who are some of those voices? Who are those leaders? Those people? You're, I mean, is it, a, is it a family member? Yeah. Who who do you, who are you saying? You know what? These are my guys. These wow, are that's great. Yeah. Well, I would say one of the most uh, influential books that I've read, or I read over and over, is by Howard Hendricks. Was called the Seven, um, the Seven Habits of a Leader, or mm, of sounds a t- very important to you. Se- yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I'm just. <laughs> I mean, it's called something about the seven. Seven something something <laughs> teacher. So look it up. Google it. Seven. <laughs> so you're not much of a reader about either. About a teacher, <laughs> Howard Hendricks. The laws of a teacher. Seven laws of a teacher. That's what it is. Seven laws of a teacher. Really influential, guys. A great book. Pick it up where books are sold. I would say another um, you know, podcast I like listening to. We talk about a lot. I do love Craig uh, Groeschel's leadership yeah, podcast. I, I don't know. I just love listening to him. I think he's great. Yeah, he's um, great I content. love the people that he has. Yeah, the content on there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I do, I do like to read. Um, <laughs> you know, how to read books, unlike some people in this just podcast. Kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Well, that's good. That. Hendrix. Yeah, Howard <laughs> Hendrix. Seven <laughs> Laws of a Teacher. That's what it is. It just took Seven me a second. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we'll have to right. cut this part. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. <laughs> There's got to be another book that I like. You know, a book I also I really have always enjoyed. I'm not even gonna say it right, but it is the um, Les Miser- Miserables. How ever you say that? I love that book. I can't even pronounce it. But I read, in fact, when we were roommates together, I read it and we read it together. This is going off the rails, man. Uh, the unabridged version. It's like a thousand pages. It took me like three years to read it. But man, it is so good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, let me ask you another question. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real, I love that book. Yeah. Yeah. Are up. yeah. Date night. What's that Ooh, look like for you and your wife? Date night. We go to a restaurant. We got uh, our kids, so we're finally reaping the fruit of our labor. My oldest daughter can babysit for us. Yeah, that's Hallelujah! Awesome. Not paying an arm and a leg for a babysitter, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So we actually can afford a real meal now. So Ava, my daughter, babysits. We'll go um, to a restaurant, two places. One called Jane. They got a great burger. I know I said burritos, but they got a great burger called El Macho Burger. We'll go there, huh. and then we'll go to a place called Evans. And Evans is a place where you can get like a. Uh, my wife loves going there, like a little. It's like a little foot massage place. I know it sounds kind of huh. weird, but it's very cool. So dinner and some sort of dinner and some little adventure, dynamic, little dessert, yeah. some dynamic, yeah. Well, I my mean, wife does not like movies, so we don't ever watch movies together. Yeah, I mean, being your roommate, that was a thing. We go to movies all the time. Oh, I know, all yeah. the time. No, my wife's not into it. She's not into it. Huh, rather do something active or something. Yeah, I'd rather talk or hang out, yeah, play talk. a game. Yeah, wife, she always like to talk. Yeah. Well, man, um, thank you for your time. Hey, my I pleasure. Like I really appreciate you sharing just kind of what's going on in the life of your church. Um, 
before we close it down, I mean, anything else you got? Anything you want to ask me? Anything? Well, just thanks for letting me be here today. Oh. The, uh, the first christening of the podcast yeah. studio. Great job. Great studio. I Blessed do want to ask you here. one last question. Yes, sir. If people want to stay connected to you. Yes. How do they stay connected to you personally or to the content yeah. that's coming out from Anthem? Is there that's a website? Great. Is there social media? Yeah, what you can go to our website, anthemchapel.com. We have an Instagram, Anthem Chapel, you know, at Instagram or whatever. Yeah, I, my personal, I don't really, I have Instagram. I need to be better about kind of keeping but your that church, updated. So but my church, you can follow yeah. the church and follow us there. Content's all there, teaching. All, all there. We have a yeah. YouTube channel. Amazing all swag, as you can see right here. They well, got the best you. stuff ever. All right, Nate. Well, thanks for coming. Thank, we appreciate you being on the podcast. Looking forward to what you're doing this uh, weekend with us. Men's night tonight, yes. Sunday mornings. And student, student, retreat. student retreat. Yeah. So thanks for being here, buddy. We'll be praying for Anthem Chapel. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, appreciate right. you. God bless you. Dude, that book thing was so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so hilarious. <laughs> you're like, the most famous book I love. <laughs>